want to focus on a little bit today is the continuous movement. Now, there are a lot of things that make Tai Chi continuous, non-stopping. Uh, what I'm concerned about today is kind of this connection from the left side to the right side. And just as a, a bit of an analogy, if uh, you were throwing a baseball, you know, playing catch. So you'd have to catch, transfer to the other hand, and then throw. In Tai Chi, it's not two movements. So we have to coordinate. As we are coming back, one is going out, but this is what we would also call storage or receiving and expressing, and it takes place in one movement. Sometimes when we hear storage, we think of putting something away to use later. The idea here is that this, if I was doing Repulse the Monkey, so I'm here, this is coming back as this is going out. So I'm using this energy on the left side to extend into that right side, getting a little more energy. There's also, you know, from the feet, pushing down with our waist turn or our swing to get it there, but there is also a connecting energy across the top of the body and on the left and right side. And I like to do these two together because hamstrung salute, it is more of an up and down and repulse the monkey. It is more of a forward and back or a left to right, but an outward movement instead of an up and down. So we're gonna start with hamstrung salute and we come into this from brush knee. So what I want us to notice, sometimes if you think of where this posture ends and the next posture will end, it gives us some better idea on our movement. So if I have finished fresh knee, I am shoulders square to the front, I'm in a bow stance, and my arms are out from my shoulders. When I finish hands from salute, most of us know this part, empty heel stance, open to the corner, my hands are at the center line. And I bring this up just to make us more aware that we have to go from here to here on our hands. So there is a little bit of an inward movement on our hands. We don't want to finish out like this and nobody really does that, but it's that it's a continuous. We don't here and come in. We have to make this part of the posture all the way through to get our arms slowly towards that center line. So we're gonna start with our footwork. And when we finish our brush knee, we're in this bow stance. So our first step is a repeat. So to, I'm just gonna bring that back foot in. So I wanna push through that back leg, get centered, bring the foot in on the ball of the foot and put the heel down. And then I'm going to push extending down the front of that leg into the ball of the foot, turning square, heel comes down, and then as I push my way forward, I'm going to extend down into the heel, letting that toe come closer to the floor. We don't want to finish with it up. I don't think anybody can, it's very hard to do. If you were in an open stance to the corner and you pull that toe up, very awkward. But we want to make sure that we get it down a little bit. Keep this roundness through here. If it's up too high, you tend to close in your quad. So we wanna make sure that we let that foot extend down, kind of that pushing from the back, so I'm here pushing from the back to the front. Even though it isn't touching, I'm getting it closer. And again, all you need is a paper slip between the front of the foot and the floor. So let's practice that footwork. Again, this is pretty simple. So we are in a left bow stance, and these left foot forward, right foot, 45 degree. I am leaning forward a little bit here. So I'm already in a pivot. So I extend into that right ball of foot, and then I rotate a little bit in the hip to bring it in. And then I'm going to put that heel down, and my weight starts to come back and I start to pivot to straight. So now I'm straight up and down. Heel is going to come down, keeping that claw open. For some reason at this point, it's pretty easy to close that. And then as I push 30% of the weight onto the front leg, going straight back, 
going back and I'm going to pivot to upright. And at this point, my hips and shoulders are pretty square to the front. Extend it into the ball of that left foot, then extend the heel down, and then push it through that right leg, swing to the center. So let's do it again. Brush knee left, hands from the lift. Pushing in, pushing back, pushing down, and pushing forward and swing. So I never stopped. So let's try that without a lot of direction, just trying to keep that movement very continuous from here. So my weight shift, it doesn't just come to a hard stop and start going the other direction. So forward on the leg. Backward on the leg. Forward on the leg. So it never comes to a complete stop. We don't even stop in between postures, which we will start working on at some point. But right now we're trying to get very continuous here in our posture. So one more time. Claw open. Shoulders square. Push it forward. Back. Pushing back. Getting upright. Swing to the corner. All the time, maintaining an open quad. Footwork's actually pretty easy on this posture. It's nothing new for us, but it's that continuous movement that I want us to work on on that one. So now we're going to add our hands. When we are doing this posture, again, we start our arms out, and we need to get them to center. This is not turn the palms, bring them in. There is a continuous rotation. So this is a very slow rotation because it's going to match with that hip coming in and that hip grounding down. Now I'm going to, sorry, did the wrong way. From here, I'm going to rotate slowly, pushing into that ball, heel down, and then I'm going to rotate. This is a very definite rotation this way. Initially, it's a rotating to get those palms in. Again, it comes from up here. So what I want us to practice first, and we're going to take the continuous movement out of it. We will put it all back when we put it together. But just bring your heel in a little bit. Now I want you to rotate this rotation that we do to get the palms turned in. And as you do that, you're kind of turning a little to the corner. So just practice this internally, getting them rotated, and that helps to bring them towards the center line. Again, we're out here, so we do need to bring them in. So that makes this a little bit easier to get that rotation. You're not holding it in place. It's going to come with you. And for some people, that's easier. So I've stepped in, and I'm going to rotate up here and the back, getting those palms turned in. So from here, we're going to come forward, and as we come in, we're going to start this rotation until the heel comes down. When we turn around, let's practice that. So from brush knee left, to hand strong salute, pushing forward, rotating, coming down. At this point, your palms are sort of facing in. We'll go on the palm direction in a minute. So from here, we're going to push our way forward, start rotating, stepping in. Now our palms are not going to rotate flat. They're, and I recommend you look this up on YouTube. This is very hard to describe. And I want you to look at Master Young June's hands. They are setting, and he says they are setting in two directions. Uh, so you have this and you have a downward. It's kind of between an, a strike here and a downward palm. So they are kind of in diagonal is what I would call it, but they're not limp. So there is a setting to them, an extension through here on both sides to get those palms correct. And this one is going to connect at the top 
when their opponent's arm is when they're going to connect with the elbow. So they have a diagonal kind of a push up and a push down. Uh, pushing up through this part of the hand, I'm assuming, pushing down. Same area, but a little bit more inside. So we're going to get them to that diagonal at this first juncture. Okay, so they're pretty much not going to change here. Arms are going to move, but their palms are turned the way we need them to be. So let's practice that, getting those palms where we need them to go. So from brush knee left, starting hand drums the loop. And again, hand drums the loop. That's pretty simple. Next, we need to start our up and down after we get our body correct. So we are here. I keep wanting to do zoom style today. <laughs> we're going to come in and then we're going to push ourselves straight. And as I come back, I'm not moving my arms. They're turning with the body. What I'm talking about when I'm pushing myself straight is this pivot. So when we do brush knee, if this is my center line, I have pushed back like this. When I push through that ball of the foot, I'm going to push my body upright. It's going to go back into a bit of a lean, but we need to get it upright to start. And that's what's going to move my hand. So I'm going to do that from the side here. I'm forward and I rotate, and then as I push my way back, my body becomes more straight. Requires a pushing down through here to get my body upright. So it's pushing down here. I'm not bringing my shoulders back. Now that's an exaggeration, but your brain likes to move from your shoulders, and it would be something like this. It has to come from our center. So if I am here, Pushing back, getting upright, and then that heel is going to come down. So let's practice up to getting upright and getting that heel down. From brush knee left. So as we push our way forward, we start rotating those hands, palms at a diagonal, and then as we push our center back, bending into the ball of the foot, we're going to get our body up. Do that again. Bow stance, shoulder square, hands drum salute. Okay, our next part, again, I'm going to do this to the side. Let me do it to this side. So from here, This is an up and down. 
very similar to white crane, up and down. So the coordination then between your left side and your right side is an up and down movement. And it happens again here and this rotation. I'm gonna try and make it really big. This is an exaggeration. This is not how you do it, but so that we can see it. Let me get rid of two of my feet. Okay, hands strong salute. Your shoulders may change relative to each other, but they're going to stay in line. There, there is a difference. We'll be working towards that instead of a constant down. This can be down if they're equally in line. So there's a difference between getting your shoulders out of line. So let's practice everything up until this point. So from here, head up. Shoulders down, expand the back, sinking the chest, and relax that waist downwards. You should feel a good connection in both legs, keeping that quad rounded, pushing into both your feet. So as we push forward, I rotate those palms slightly. I'm going to come back, extending into that ball. Heel comes down. I'm not quite to the corner yet. And then as I push my way forward, one up, one down. Feeling that connection in the back. Again, it can be very small, or, but it, can be, it looks big on the outside. It's very small movement when you get it internal. So let's do it again. From here, have our body shape, keeping that head extended. It's almost like you're moving from here down. Sometimes there's a disconnect from the head, like a marionette, so that your limbs are moving under your head. Your head is kind of going with your body, but because our brain likes to lead with the head, what we don't want to see, and I do see this sometimes in class when we get nervous, is my head comes forward, my head comes back. We don't want to be doing that kind of movement in, this, in any posture. So trying to disconnect, keeping your head still might be a better, like it's on, that string and it's held up, it's not being controlled by this lower body movement. So brush knee left, hand strong salute. And when we finish, we need 30% of the weight on that front foot. And I mentioned that before, we don't want to be like this. That front leg is empty. I cannot connect my arms unless I feel energy into both feet equally. So we want to finish here, putting some weight back and making this rotation through the body. It's very effective. We have all heard the story. It's very easy to break an arm doing this. That's why we don't actually connect on the elbow. And it's not this kind of energy is whole body energy. And sometimes it's easy to see whole body energy like brush knee, right? You can see the body going forward into it. These up and down movements, little less obvious, right? But it still has to be there. So I want you to try and work on getting that feeling through here. And you don't have to do the whole posture. Uh, I like this one just a Back and forth. Feeling left side pushing up, right side pushing down. But again, it's not in a straight line, it's in a circle or a rotation. Okay, so next we're gonna go into uh, Repulse the Monkey, which has a slightly different coordination between left and right. So on to Repulse the Monkey. Now, more than just continuous, I want to work on a problem that we see a lot of times in class, and that is a twisting. What we don't want to do from here is people sometimes tend to twist at this point, and it's because you can't keep your body shape here. I'm having a hard time keeping my balance there. And it happens a couple of reasons. And a lot of 
of times it's a matter of degree. That might have been more extreme than what we see in class. But there are two things I want you to kind of watch out for, and then we'll go over them again as we go through the posture. So if I am here, the first issue a lot of times is people try to rotate the back arm all the way to the corner. It is a rotation, like brush knee, right? It rotates very similar to brush knee, but it is not to the corner because your body does not turn any more than here. If I am going into brush knee, I'm square, I'm corner, I am beyond the front corner, and I can get that to the back corner. When we are here, my body direction stays at corner. So it should not go all the way back here. When you do that, you lose connection, and then when you step, you get twisted trying to make the step. Along with that, or sometimes it's a problem on its own, so a lot of times it's the two combined. From here, people do not get turned well enough before they step. And this is really a problem in the 103 when we do it three times in a row. But if I'm here, empty stance, before I step, it, it, again, all one movement, I need to be towards the front before I step back, getting my swing forward. If I am here and I step back, I then have to twist and come forward to get my foot in position. So it's an awareness with the footwork that I'm pushing myself around and then I step back so that my hips are square to the front with that step instead of to the corner or you know slightly towards the corner even then I have to lean and I'm going to lose my body shape because it's very hard to do that correctly. So I want you to be very aware as we go through this and you practice Make sure you're not twisting on this step. So we're going to start now with that footwork, the lower body. From here, it doesn't look like much because there isn't a lot of weight shift back. So this has to go very slowly. My swing until I am about here. Okay, so that's about where the arms are. I'm not one, don't want you to worry about the arms just yet. So I need to push my weight back and swing or curve and then rotate in that hip to step back. See how my body stays upright? It is now square so that then I can come around and do the rest of it. We don't want to be leaning too much at this point. If you're leaning or twisted, an opponent's really going to pull you over, but it's very hard on your back. I'm feeling it just that little bit that I did incorrectly. So, from hamstrung salute, we're going to swing and get that step as we are to the front. Okay. Now, let's do it together. I'll turn around. So from here, I want us to just practice swing, keeping that quad open the whole time, extending into both legs the whole time, and step forward. Come back. Here, empty heel stance, swing, step. And you leave the ball of foot up, heel off, that's more comfortable for you right now. Okay, so we have that part. From here, getting around, step. Now as that heel is coming down, I'm going to be swinging just a little bit, and I start to extend into the heel on my right foot. Left heel comes down, I extend it to the right heel. It's hard to do and hold this, but I'm not yet pushing that ball of foot up. I'm going to keep it close to the floor. I'm just extending, getting a really good pivot point. You want this pivot point. That brings a lot of energy into the body, and that is where you're really going to have what you need the oomph to finish this posture. So watch this again where we're going to finish. So from here, swing, step, left heel down, extending into the right heel. Again, making sure you kept 
your knees in a line with your toes and your hips. Don't let this one twist. Be very aware of this. One way that you can help prevent that, keeping those hips level. We want to be very careful, and I'm not seeing it in my classes anymore, but I do see it in beginners. We don't want you to come up and down with that foot. I brought my hips up, brought my head up, and I lost my body shape. Everything stays level here. So as I swing and step, and that heel comes down, I extend into that front heel. These go together. We don't usually pause there, and it's kind of hard to hold it. But you need to keep these level, keep your knees in a line. So let's practice that part. So from empty heel stance to the right corner, I'm going to swing. Let me do it again. I'm going to swing and step and heel down, extend into the front heel. Try that again. From here, swing, step, and now extend into that heel. Now, be very aware, and you can just turn on the heel now. If you bring that heel back, am I on either side of the center line? A very common problem is that we overstep. And it happens from the way I teach this in the beginning as just one swing. I don't use, put the step in it because I want people to get used to swinging and getting around and sometimes it's easy to cross that center line when you do that. The stepping, if you could do a swing with a step, you're not as likely to do that, but I still want you to be aware of it. So I'm here and I rotated that hip to come back like this so that then I am on either side of my center. It doesn't matter if it's an inch or if it's two inches, just anywhere less than shoulder width apart. And I want you to be in balance. This posture will not work, any posture will not work if you're wobbling. So if you need a wider step back to do this, then have more space between your heels. And then you might be able to bring them in a little closer at a later point, but you're not going to have the energy you need if you were bringing them in too close to start with. So from here, we're going to swing, step, heel down, ball slightly off, and then I am going to push really hard down this leg, and I'm going to rotate in this hip. Now we talked about this rotation that we did in our warm-up like this, you will get more energy when you break this up. So one rotates in and back or out on the outside. So if I am here and I push into that leg and I do this as a dual rotation, I really get a little more energy out of this coming up from my root. Not there yet, that's fine. I would rather you rotate in that hip to protect that knee until, we, until you reach a point that your lips are loose enough that you can break it into two. What we really don't want, and because this is awkward, and all these things go together. So if I stepped and I crossed my center line and I lead with that knee, my quad is really going to close. My knees are going to get very out of alignment. Very important, rather you didn't get the arms right at all than to mess up the footwork on this one. And I don't want you to try and put too much energy into this turn until you can make sure you always bring that knee with the hip and the toe. I don't want you to get there and put it back in a line. It has to stay in a line the whole way through. Now, I find it easier with that dual rotation in the hip, but I've been doing it longer, and it could be, you know, sometimes your brain is still using the knee with that rotation to come around, and it's not going to be there. So if you're really putting energy into it, make absolutely sure your alignment is correct. Don't want you to hurt your joints as we do this. So from here, quad rounded, and it stays rounded the whole time. Hips 
need to stay very loose for this. I'm going to swing, rotate in the hip, heel down, ball off, swing, I'm sorry, rotate in that hip. So it's going to rotate and turn. And what we don't want to do is bring, and it's not necessary, bring that ball of foot up and turn like this and put it down. This one is going to re retain good, strong contact on that heel to get the energy. So let's practice up to that point. So we are here in a heel stance on the left side. We're going to swing, step, heel down, ball comes off, swing. Opening to this right corner. So we're going to rotate in that hip as we swing our body to face the corner. And as we do that, a little weight is going to go forward. Let's practice it without the weight yet. So from here, we're going to push back. And we've been working some. This is a good one with the curve because it does match very well here. Square, step, heel, ball comes off, swing, weight forward. So that we put 30% of the weight back there. And that will be more clear when we get to where the hands end. So that's our middle and our lower body. And again, we wanna make sure that we get square on our middle body or our uh, hip axis before we take the step back so that we don't twist. Now, when we start our posture, just like I talked about arms, we come out of brush knee, they have to go to center. They're center, and now they have to go back out the shoulders and I do see this let me do it here if you don't open them enough and you're still kind of at center line that is not the posture this arm has to be out from the shoulder and this has to be out from the shoulder so they have to travel in distance back out to shoulder width apart as we are moving and uh, again get the lower body first but if you have that, so from here, as I swing to step, I'm going to start rotating. Now, this right arm is going to rotate up and it's going to make this big rotation here. The left arm rotates and it does so very slowly. I have heard it should finish as this finishes. So that's a very, very slow rotation. I can't quite get it perfect on that one, so I don't hold anybody else to that kind of standard, but if you really want to work on it, you know, it's again, it's that continuous and that coordination because this movement is so large, this side has to go much slower. So I am here, and then I am going to rotating, turning that right palm up, continue that rotating on the left hand as my arm comes out and I step as it comes in and that's when that left palm finishes its rotation up so the hip rotates as this arm comes in what I want to go over again on this one is we don't go all the way back to the corner let me do it from the side I don't want to go back here I'm too open again my body hasn't turned so I'm here and I'm going to rotate and it's going to come out about like this it's not quite you know straight off the shoulder but it is not going to be open too much so it's going to rotate and come here then it needs to come in Let me turn this way when it comes in that elbow stays out and it stays down so i think of it as a pivot point so i am just going to rotate on that elbow pushing down is going to stay in space right where it is so it's here and it does not change in space or relative to the body you want to make sure you don't close that elbow real tight when you do this but that arm is going to come up okay, up and in but it is not a straight line circles and circles in a little bit we can do the elbow right in when it comes 
into the shoulder, palm is set, and it's at a diagonal, but it's straight from the elbow. It's at a diagonal because my elbow is down. And you can do it more like this, but it's, it's set just the same. It's just the direction of that elbow that makes it look at a slant. So I don't want you to purposely uh, make this at a slant like that. See if my elbow is up, it's in a straight line off of that elbow. And it is an extended palm pushing through here, set, ready to go. Left hand, we kind of talked about it up until this point. It is one very, very slow rotation to face up. All of that again, happening up here in my chest and back. And I have to be open, extended through here to be able to connect these. This one is harder because this one is so big relative to the left. But mainly we want to keep it open. Do they get the right angle? We don't want to make this a big circle. See, and it came in and I closed up here. So it rotates through that shoulder, the chest and back, staying in the same position. Now again, when this one comes over, it is set. And this one is set at a little bit off angle. Something about the uh, application, someone grabs your hand, you kind of bend that wrist into it a little bit, it makes them hold tighter, and you want them to hold you there. So when I am here, down here, so it's going to rotate and come out and set just a little bit. Actually, I, I forgot about that because we do have to bring the arm out. So it's here, it will rotate outward. Instead of a rotating in, it's going to rotate outward. Be very aware of that. It really makes a difference on this ending if you can get this rotation correct. The extension in the palm makes things look nice and certainly for application, but a lot of it is that it's here and it needs to go to shoulder and it needs to have opening up here. So again, from center line to shoulder to back. The back part is gonna come with them together, but let's practice from that part. So we are now adding our upper body, hands from salute, having some opening up here in your armpit, rotating through this chest and back make those arms change. Have your body shape while I'm rounded. So as we start to rotate, swinging as we circle that right arm out, down. And it is in when that foot touches. So let's try it from the beginning. Touch. And at this point, your left arm should be straight out from your shoulder. From here, we're going to start our turning and activating those arms against an opponent. So I'm going to rotate, step. Now I talked a little bit about the idea of baseball and the storing of the energy. So our left side is going to come in. And that would be storing. That's bringing in or uh, receiving, and this one is going to be issuing or going out. So you can think of this as a push. It looks like a pull if you were pulling against somebody. You're actually pushing my left side back, right, to bring them in. I'm not pulling like this with the arm or even pulling with the left side. That changes things. It's a push back, and that push to the back is going to send flip one going to send the right arm out so you're using energy from this left side receiving as it goes out it is not uh, catch and throw it's not left side out right side out now again that's beginners because of the way we have to teach it but it's not quite this either there has to be a connection when i do this that they are going together. And this is something, it's not a absolute yes or a no, 
lights on, lights off, you can get better and better and better at this. So you can be here, just like we did this last little bit for hand strum salute, and practice that connection with that heel, with the swing. Shouldn't said heel, the rotation in that hip, and the rotation, this arm down, rotating down, and this one rotating out and up just a little bit. It's coming from here, and it's gonna come out. So the left arm here, let me get there from here. The left arm, it's going to come back, but it's not straight back like this. It's not like this. It's going to rotate. This is that horizontal rotation. It's going to rotate back. So that elbow comes to my side. Now my body will be turned at the end, okay, where it's pointing to the corner. What we don't want is this. And you see this all the time, that this comes in a straight line. I've closed up here in my armpit. I have, I'm not connected anymore across my body, and it's going to make the next posture a little more difficult. In the 16, it isn't such a big deal to, to change for a strike tighter. But I still want you to start getting that open again so that when I am here, when I come back, it rotates out a little bit from the front. It's going, first it's going to rotate this way and come out, and then it's going to come back. And it ends down here about the hip. Down about like that. So my elbow is open up here. Sometimes it's easy to think of just pushing, pushing that elbow back. But I like to get you to where you can do a rotation internally, getting this movement like this to come out. Now our right arm, again, let me get there. From here, it's in. My elbow has to come down, and my hand is going to end straight from my shoulder. So as I pivot, it comes down. So this movement isn't that. That's my hand leading. Let's move it from this side. That's my hand leading. That's not any, any energy. I'm open at my armpit and I retain that opening, but I'm going to rotate down and out. Kind of twisting or uh, screwing into an opponent so that I'm getting that arm in for a really good strike. From here to here with my hand, I'm not connected. I don't have the body with it. But I also want to make sure that this elbow rotating down like this gives me that connection, that yin and yang. We've talked about that before, that if I want to bring my wrist up, I push down on the top of the elbow, up like this. And then we take that into rotation where that elbow has a coordinating rotation relative to the wrist. And that is what this one is from here. It's, it has to be down. And it coordinates coming out. So there's a rotation out. That's a little extreme. I don't want to do it too much so that you don't overdo it, but that you feel the connection with that elbow. And it is not just the hand going out. It is pushing all the way down the arm to get us there. So from here, our arms again. Maintain it, but you definitely have to have it at the end in order to feel the energy. So let's practice the whole posture up until that point. So from hand strum salute, head up, have our body shape, rounded quad. Repulse the monkey. So as I push my way back and I'm swinging and I'm rotating and I'm circling that right arm. 
brush me, you can kind of see it. Here, it doesn't look as obvious, but this push on both sides, this is a rotation back, this is a push, will make it into a rotation. That left side, I take all the energy off that left side and put it forward. Now when we finish, and we're gonna go back and practice again, my body is going to have a slight tilt to it. It is not quite a full pivot, right? Where it's a straight line this way, and it is not forward, it is to the right side. Let me see if I can find a good angle for this one. So if I am here, and I come back, when I'm coming out, I'm putting my body behind it. And that is what the shoulder going forward a little bit is going to do for me. It's a lean towards this right, a little bit forward. We don't want to finish upright here, where? In the, in the beginning, and I try and do it that way for beginners, just so that they only get the necessary parts to start with. These are finer details. So again, from here, I want you to notice the change in my body leaning. I guess would be the right word. It's still not quite right. So that I am forward a little bit and I'm to that right a little bit. This would be upright. It's got a little bit of a tilt to it, but it is an empty stance. We have a little bit of it when we finish hands from flip. We don't want to be like this, right? We're rounded like we talked about when we do white crane. So it has that, this one has that little bit towards the right side when we finish. And I hope that showed up on camera. If not, we'll go a little more in classes. So let's put everything together now and try and get the whole posture or the parts that you need. So from hands, from salute, rounded quad, body shape, head up. We're going to stay looking forward on this one. Opening in those armpits. Keep those shoulders down. Keep that head low. Repulse the monkey. Let's do it again. So hands from salute. Everything in position, your pulse, the monkey. This is where I say any questions. <laughs> I can't wait to get back to regular classes. Okay, so now let's practice both postures together. We're, we'll start from uh, fresh knee. And I will have my back to you like we would in class. So from brush knee left, hands from salute. Repulse the mind. Again, hands from the loop, up and down. Repulse the monkey is a little bit more side to side. Your body is going forward and back in both of those, your hands and, and your torso some. But the difference and how they're similar. So from brush knee left, rounded quad, body shape, head up. Hands from the loop. Repulse the monkey. Let's do it again. Brush knee left. Hands from the loot. Repulse the monkey. also an easier one for me anyway to make it 
contiguous from posture to posture. So if we want to go just a little bit further on this, if we, I'm going to face you, and we go into hamstrung salute, repulse the monkey, we can start those rotations and going right into it. So it goes from here, but it doesn't stop. It slows and then you start the rotation. I like this one, but uh, you might have a different posture where it's easier to start. Try and find one where you can continue these rotations. I guess I like this one because there's so much up in the upper body, which I find easier to control. So I'm rotating this way and then I change it. I'm sorry, rotating this way and then I change it to this rotation. It flows, it pauses, it never comes to a hard stop and start right back up again. I like Master Young Shooting the way he explained one time years and years and years ago. If you are on a swing, when you swing up at the top of that arc, there is just that brief instant of weightlessness, this free feeling before you come back down. So that when I finish hamstrung salute, there is just this little moment before that rotation picks up speed again and I go into repulse the monkey. So we'll practice that, the two will get together again. If you want to work on that, you can add that part now. So from brush knee left, hands from salute, Repulse the monkey. And one more time. Brush knee left. Rounded claw, body shape, head up. Hands from salute. Repulse the monkey. And for those that are in the 103, we're going to add here the other two repulse the monkey. And again, these can be, should be continuous. So if I am here, we want to come out, step back, push back, and then those rotations change. I was too worried I was getting out of view of the camera. Uh, let me start up here a little bit closer to this side. One. Two. Three. Because we call that one posture, sometimes that might make it easily easier just metal or a cognitive point of view, making it continuous because we think of it as one movement, but you can change those rotations of the hands very easily there when you do the three. So I'll let you practice that on your own. So hopefully we'll be together soon, and I've been talking to different people at HCC. We're just waiting on a lot of different things to get our classes going again, and hopefully we'll hear something this week or next. Until then, I hope you have a great week and you stay healthy.